The evil is far greater than even I had thought it to be. It threatens to choke out the life of our people and also the life system that supports us all. This solution will not be found in the arrogance of the powerful, but in unity with the weak and helpless. I pray to God that with this fast, it will be a preparation for the multitude of simple deeds for justice, carried by men and women whose hearts are focused on the suffering of the poor and who yearn for a better world. Together, all things are possible, says Cesar Estrada Chavez. Born March 31st, 1927, passed away April 23rd, 1993. Cesar Chavez was a great leader. His speeches were significant, demonstrated great communication concepts, and inspired many of us. Today, we will first tell you why we chose Cesar Chavez. Second, the significance of his speeches. Third, how he demonstrated great communication concepts. Last, why this speaker's ability inspires us. I will first begin by giving you an insight on why we chose Cesar Chavez. The love for justice that is in us is not only the best part of our being, but it is also the most true to our nature. He was the man that understood that in order to stop suffering, you needed to escape from that circle and fight for what you want, that anything is possible. He remembers seeing signs that read whites only, having to listen to a lot of racist remarks, and he also felt that education had nothing to do with his farm worker way of life. He believed that the end of all education should surely be service to others. He was influenced by Father Donald McDonald, which they talk about bringing the farm workers together and making strikes. Later, the United Farm Workers was born. Cesar Chavez led this historic nonviolent movement for farm workers' rights and dedicated to building a movement of poor working people that expand beyond the fields and into cities and towns across the nation. He inspired farm workers and millions of other people who have never worked on a farm before to commit themselves to social, economic, and civil rights activism. This is why we chose him. Senator Robert F. Kennedy once said, he is one of our heroic figures of my time. I say, even though he isn't from my time, he does pay tribute to the memory of Dr. King and he also left us with a great legacy, speeches, and reading material in our textbooks to allow us to understand and value our heroes from the past. Most importantly, remember that if it weren't for them, we wouldn't have the freedom, equality, and happiness that we have today. What better books can there be than the Book of Humanity? And now, Adam will talk to you about the significance of his speeches. Uh, there was great significance to one specific, well, actually many uh, speeches that Chavez gave, we decided to pick one. And this would be uh, a speech he delivered on November 9th, 1984, to the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco, California. This is the speech we'll be focusing on today. Um, one of the reasons this speech was so significant was that it encompassed his lifelong work uh, from the start of his movement to basically the end. Uh, Chavez speaks about his struggle to obtain rights for migrant workers by mentioning it uh, in the speech as printed in Cesar Chavez, an organizer's tale edited by Alien Stevens. Quote, all of my life I have been driven by one dream, one goal, one vision, to overthrow, a farm, to overthrow farm labor in this nation which treats farm workers as if they were not important human beings. Farm workers are not agricultural implements. They are not beasts of burden to be used and discarded. That dream was born in my youth. Uh, his entire speech, again, is an overview of the struggle for not just migrant workers, but for all Hispanics. Also, this speech in San Francisco uh, had great significance because it's very persuasive. Uh, one of the reasons that Chavez is so persuasive is he was a migrant worker himself, as were his mother and his father. Um, so he reiterates this several times in his speech, reminding the audience where he's coming from. Quote, I'm not different than anyone else who's ever tried to accomplish, accomplish something with his life. My motivation comes from my personal life, from watching what my mother and father went through when I was growing up, from what we experienced together as farm workers in California. Uh, mentioning this experience makes Chavez's speech so powerfully persuasive. Also in the San Francisco speech, he explains 
not only his entire movement, but the results that they're starting to see from this movement. Uh, Chavez, <coughs> Chavez reminds the crowd that they've come a long way uh, for farm workers' rights, as well as all Hispanics. Uh, he tells the audience what the, he and the National Farm Workers Association have accomplished by stating, quote, tens of thousands of children and grandchildren of farm workers and the children and grandchildren of poor Hispanics are moving out of the fields. Chavez then states some of the current positions and status that some of these children now hold. Quote, in 1984, there are over 400 elected judges, council members, mayors, and legislators, all of whom, as he was implying, uh, were sons or daughters of Hispanic or migrant workers in California. There are several aspects uh, that make Chavez's speech so significant. But now let's turn to uh, some of the communication concepts that uh, propel the power of the speech. Uh, this brings us to our third point. Some of the communication, communica communicative techniques that Cesar Chavez uses in this speech. First of all, he uses ethos throughout the entire speech. He reveals his uh, credibility on the topic of farm workers uh, to add some punch and power to the speech. Uh, Chavez Chavez is trying to convince Chavez is trying to convince the crowd that he knows the most about the farm worker situation because he used to be one. And he displays this by mentioning the discrimination he saw against Hispanics in the 1940s and 50s. And why as a young man, uh, he knew that he'd have to change the way things were and start a movement that quote, grew from anger and rage. Emotions that I felt 40 years ago when people of my color were denied the right to see a movie or eat at a restaurant in many parts of California. It grew from the frustration and humiliation I felt as a boy who couldn't understand how the growers could abuse and explo exploit farm workers when there were so many of us and so few of them. Path